YouTubers and industry professionals are calling out the many problems that AAA gaming has had in recent years, and it's only getting better. That's right, the conversation around AAA gaming and the mistakes that they've been making has been growing and growing and growing. And it's starting to reach a fever pitch between online discord, between YouTube videos talking about a plethora of different things, whether it's financial issues, whether it's agenda issues, or whether it's just we're not going to read the reviews issues that, uh, interestingly enough, Bethesda said that they weren't going to do. There are so many issues. And one of the issues that's getting absolutely hammered on right now is how gaming is too expensive. No, not necessarily too expensive for us to buy, but too expensive for these stupid studios to afford. Now, why would I call them stupid? Well, there are a lot of points here to get through. And one of my favorite ones that I made in a video a while back. So to kick things off, let's go over to Tim Willits, the chief creative officer of Saber Interactive, the guy who basically oversaw Space Marines 2, which is an absolute blast of a game, especially if you're playing with your buddies. And he had this to say in an IGN article just a few days ago. Uh, Willits has his own theory on what's happening. Speaking to IGN, Willits said that the problem isn't necessarily that AAA games take too long to develop and thus launch into already abandoned genres, rather, will it's believed AAA developers are tending to overscope their games, which in turn means they fail to do any one thing brilliantly. He also went on to say, we do not need to sell 4 million units to make it Space Marines 2 a success. There are many games, sadly, especially out of North American developers, where if you do not sell 5 million copies, you're a failure. I mean, what business are we in where you fail if you sell less than 5 million? And that is a fantastic point to say. Why would you have to set the bar so freaking high that you have no choice but to sell that many copies? And in a video that was covering the absolutely over bloated spending that companies have been doing, hear what Bellular had to say about Spider-Man 2. They have to. Their games are so expensive that they need to hit near 10 million sales for one of their big titles to even be worth making. The Insomniac League made this abundantly clear. Spider-Man 2 needed to sell 7.2 million copies at full price in order to break even. At full price. That's right, having to sell over 7 million copies just to break even at full price should not be your business model. And honestly, I think what this comes down to is what I said in my uh, what actually destroyed gaming or what's actually wrong with gaming. I'll leave it on the screen somewhere here and how DEI didn't destroy it and DEI wasn't is just a distraction. But the biggest issue with all of this is that these studios are hiring way too many people. It is absolutely insane how many people they're hiring. Look at Rocksteady. Back in 2007 and 2009, Rocksteady Studios had about 40 to 60 people in the development of the first Batman Arkham game. They have now since ballooned to over 250 people. That is insane. That's like a four and a half times increase, five to four and a half times increase. Why would you need that many more people when you were already developing killer freaking games? What was the point? It's like, oh, hey, we had a successful game. We made some money. By the way, let's hire a bunch more people and let's make the game so astronomically expensive. You know, if you go and you look it up, it's about an average of $100,000 salary for everybody who works in the gaming industry. Now that's the average, obviously CEOs and all that make more, but again, averages people, we're talking math here, that's an average. And if you really add it up, 250 people times $100,000 a year, you can start to see why these game companies are spending a ridiculous amount of money to develop these games. And we don't even have to get into the marketing. Then on top of that, the companies are so brilliantly stupid that they can't figure out, well, wait a minute, why are our games so expensive? And instead, they turn around and they tell us that we need to pay more. In fact, one of the best rants that I saw on this topic was over on the Legendary Drops channel on his live stream just the other day when he had these couple of things to say. People talking on Twitter, and like in a lot of cases, they're like, I don't understand why these gamers are so angry. These gamers are always 
so angry. You're the ones that made the industry this way. Blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, well, the gamers are fucking mad because they deserve to be mad because they've had their rights as consumers and their fucking favorite hobby trampled over for the last, like, 10 plus years now. It only just continues to get worse. They just continue to push it further and further and further. We need more of your personal information. We need more of your money in microtransactions. We need more of your money from, uh, uh, you know, the, the like just the face purchase of a game. Seventy dollars isn't enough. Don't you guys understand? It's we need to go up to a hundred dollars, and actually, even a hundred dollars might be too cheap. Maybe we need to make video games one hundred and fifty dollars for a triple A game. I think then the industry would regulate, and we'd be in a really good place if games were one hundred and fifty dollars to purchase. Like that that's the fucking mentality and it just keeps going further and further. And then while they're doing that at the exact same time, they're shoving in personal personal agendas and and, and things like that. You have um, uh, like game quality in general goes down. Like, yeah, players are mad. Players are mad. If they weren't mad, the videos that I make wouldn't go anywhere. You see, the problem with these companies is not necessarily that they're making bad games and blaming the fans. I mean, that is a massive, massive issue. But the thing is, is if they spent a lot less money on these games, they could stand to make a lot more or lose a lot less. It's ridiculous that they had to spend $400 million on Concord or even $300 million on Spider-Man 2. Why are you spending that much on these games? What it tells me is that your hiring managers are absolutely retarded. And I say that literally, okay? They have a mental deficiency problem if they think they need to balloon your companies to a size that is absolutely ridiculous. I came from a construction background and we always knew that you never sent out a 10 person crew to send out a three person crew's job. You know why? Because you would lose money on that. Maybe, just maybe, we were real slow in the season and it was like, hey guys, we're gonna have to spread the work around and we're gonna have to get people, so you're gonna have to take on extra work, which means you guys are gonna have to get it done even faster because the margins are gonna get thinner. Everybody in a blue collar job knows that's how you do it. You don't send out 10 people to do a two person job. It's not necessary, it's a waste of money and at the end of the day, the people that are trying to pay you for what you're doing really don't like the fact when you look at them and they say, hey, by the way, uh, I had 10 people go to your job and it still took the same amount of time. By the way, you need to pay for those 10 people. Again, I don't understand why these companies can't see the fact that they have over hired throughout the years. They have too many people working for them. One of the biggest examples of this, obviously Elon Musk taking over uh, Twitter and he goes in and hires or fires, I'm sorry, fires 75% of the staff. The website didn't crash and it still pretty much functions. I mean, the functionality of the site didn't change. So it makes me kind of wonder, with all of these gaming studios out there just absolutely bloated to beat all hell, what would happen if they fired 50% or 60% or 70 or even 80% of their employees and kept only the top 20% of their workers? Would we actually get back to games that people wanted to play? Would you actually have a narrowed focus of scope on your games that meant something to the players? Where you come out and you do a thing and you do it very well, and guess what? People like when you do one thing and you do one thing very well. Not everybody's gonna be a Rockstar Games, where you can have some of the most incredible open world games where you can pretty much do just about anything and everything. That takes a lot of talent to do and a lot of focus to do. And these studios are proving they don't have the talent and they definitely don't have the focus. Overall, I think the biggest conversation here is if we're gonna talk about spending, we need to talk about worthless workers in the field. I come from construction, guys. And I know it's like, hey, it sucks when people lose their job, but every guy in construction, when the lazy son of a bitch got kicked off of our crew and got fired, all of us were like, thank God he's gone. The guy didn't do anything. He was worthless. All right, so maybe they need to get just a little bit more blue collar up in there and start firing some people and be like, good, the lazy workers are gone and they're out of the way of the good workers. And I honestly think that's what AAA gaming needs to do. So thank you guys so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. I do appreciate it. If you want to hear my thoughts on some other things that I have to say, here's some videos popping up on the screen right now. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.